Hi guys, it's just a quick update. Uh, the system has changed a lot over the last couple of years, so I just thought I'd um, let you know what's going on. Um, as you can see, the wind generator out the back has uh, doubled in size. That's now a uh, 900 watt three phase, um, 12 volt. At the back, we now have uh, four 200 watt solar panels. The battery bank has uh, obviously gone much bigger. There are two of these battery banks. Each battery in there is a uh, 200 ampere hour. I've got the shakes today. It's a 200 ampere hour full river AGM. Uh, so there's 10 of those, five in each one of these boxes, which, as you can see, the wife is upholstered and uh, they double up as seats for our veranda area. Uh, all of our TVs in the house are uh, LED TVs. Uh, we've got uh, computer systems, all of our lights are LED lights, the high efficiency LEDs like this one up here, quite bright. They do a uh, fantastic job. Now the system grew for a reason. A couple of years ago we had a really big flood and believe it or not there was um, flood water underneath these floorboards. Uh, we were without power for 11 odd days and uh, we simply had to up the system to cater for that from now on. I'm not going to go through that rubbish and leave the house again. Okay, so the three black wires that you can see coming up through the, uh, the floor, just in front of my foot, these are the three that come up from the wind generator. They're uh, four gauge. Basically they come up and this now is the, um, the main circuit breakers for the wind generator. And above that, you can see is the brake switch for the wind generator. A lot more heavy duty than what we used to have. Um, this is now the solar controller. This is our uh, Flex Max from Outback Power Systems. And you can, uh, I hope, read some of what's on the panel. The panel's put out uh, around about 44 amps and the max I've seen out of the wind generator personally is about 86 amps. Now the problem we have is we keep burning out components like this thing here. Uh, that's one of our rectifiers. Um, it went up in smoke and that's a 100 amp rectifier. So what was suggested was that we put a fan uh, on the system. So now that's our three phase rectifier back there. You can see the red wire coming out of it and the three black ones on the other side. So that converts our AC to DC that feeds into the batteries. Next thing we had to get rid of is we had to get rid of all the fuses that we had in here because, well, they just keep melting, to be perfectly honest. So now what we've gone to, we race the camera. Now what we've gone to are these big things down here. Uh, and as you can see in an emergency, all the wife's got to do is just simply pull that one and that cuts down all of the power. Once again we go up here to uh, bigger bus bars and bigger fuses on absolutely everything that goes through. And of course, oh, I've still got the shakes today. Um, we've now got a um, 3000 watt continuous um, inverter and we've got another one that's um, uh, 4.5 kVA. It's a modified square wave. Um, it runs refrigeration and everything else, but this one is currently in place and it's just doing a fantastic job. If you want to know where any of this gear comes from, don't hesitate to uh, just ask. Uh, that's the amp gauge that now just monitors the wind generator. That, of course, is a little midnight special in the middle, just telling me. Basically, it just gives you peace of mind. And the red thing up there is the thermostat control for the fan that keeps the... Uh, three-phase rectifier cool and that of course is our voltage monitor another thing that's changed is our DC refrigeration uh, that's an 89 litre ARB and just down there you can see the 120 litre Waco uh, both of these are getting replaced with a normal upright um, 240 volt uh, fridge freezer combo uh, keep the wife happier. Uh, we put these in, like I said, two years ago uh, when we uh, had the flood, we bought them after the flood. One of the other changes that we've made is we've put in uh, all of these LED lights. 
um, and they actually sense as you walk around the house and turn on and turn off behind so I don't have to nag the wife about turning off light switches at the same time you can get out of bed in the middle of the night go get a glass of water and the lights just turn on and turn off as you go back the opposite direction fantastic dirt cheap don't know why everyone doesn't do it you don't have to touch a light switch in the house anymore all you've got to do is just walk near them and they turn on turn off okay that thing in front of you there with the uh, blue top on it basically that's an overgrown relay it handles about 150 amps and you can see the big resistors there's three big green ones back there uh, basically once the battery voltage gets to a predetermined level that simply clamps those big resistors across the top of the battery bank to stop the wind generator from overpowering the system but of course I can turn it on and off from in here with the brake switch which if I'm going away for an extended period of time I do and I just leave the solar controller uh, to handle things um, the fridges run 24 hours a day seven days a week one is set as a freezer the other one set as a fridge um, and I, I have simply ample power we do all of our washing via this system we cook on this system every night yes we do have 240 volts connected but like I said we're prone to flooding and when the floods occur we can still do everything you know just go about our normal daily job if it takes a week two weeks to get across the bridge again and get power back I really don't care Just a little bit more about the, the batteries, like I said, um, they are uh, Full River AGMs. They've got a life expectancy of somewhere between about 7 and 10 years, and I don't know whether you can see the date on them, but some of them are now 5 years old. The performance is just absolutely fantastic, and like I say, there's uh, two banks of 5, which equals 10, 200 ampere hours each, uh, but it is a financial investment they are in Australia six hundred dollars each so you have to figure that out you know your solar panels are by far the cheapest way to go uh, they're only about three hundred and something dollars each and they're two hundred watters I've got another two to go on the system and then I've got the um, the pole for the tracker uh, probably about two-thirds of the way done and as I say the wind generator uh, that was a couple of thousand bucks but boy oh boy is it worth it like I said I've seen that push out over 80 amps and I'll include one of the photos of that uh, just to show you I'll also include one that uh, just shows all of this beautiful land around here completely and utterly underwater it's just an amazing process uh, I've got a photo of the uh, wind generator pole with uh, probably a meter of water uh, across underneath it but we will have power to burn Alright guys, any questions please put them at the bottom. Thanks.